Welcome to this new lesson or new presentation in this lesson. In this video, I will talk about the work breakdown structure, also called WBS, work packages and activities. The different points I will discuss are the structure and meaning of the WBS. We look deeper into a tree and a table format of the WBS. There are some other applications that are interesting to use and where the WBS can help us. And also I will define work packages and activities and what's the difference between them. Let's have a look at the work breakdown structure. When you want to develop a work breakdown structure, this is typically a task to be done by a team. The team members that are working on the project, they are the specialists to create a good WBS. And the WBS is very handy but it, because it will show the structure of the project. And basically you're decomposing the project. So decomposing means that you're splitting up the project as such in lower levels, but each level contains more details about the project. You can, of course, create a, a WBS for every project, but it's very important that the things that you include in the WBS are only related to the scope. The scope of the project or the work that has to be done to complete the project, that should be the only content that you will have in the work breakdown structure. What is not in the scope should not be in the WBS. When we look at the PIMBOK, uh, the Project Management Body of Knowledge, we see that the lowest level of the WBS relates to the work packages. So when we are decomposing the project, we will not go further than work packages. Another thing which is very important here and very interesting is that we can link the WBS to the project or the organization chart and create control accounts for cost budgeting and control. It's very useful later when we are going to review uh, who has been working on the project, who has to be paid, what the budgets are. Everything is basically done through the WBS when we create an organizational breakdown structure by linking the WBS to the project and the organization. And of course, it will also lead to those cost control accounts, which are very important for cost budgeting. When we look at the different formats of the WBS, the first format is the tree format. The top level or level zero, we have the project. We decompose the levels with more detail. Uh, we have more items that are part of the following level and we see that we have more and more items until we reach the lowest level, which is the level of the work packages. Another format of the WBS is what I would call the table format. The table format is like a spreadsheet format. We have all the activities we have more information that we can show and we can use it to make calculations. And typically you will find this when you're using a software, you will find a table format which will be linked to the Gantt chart. This doesn't really give you a very good overview of the project. But the advantage is that you can add more information like start dates of the um, activities, the cost, the duration, earn value parameters and so on. So it has a different uh, value, but it's basically also a WBS. And that's the way you will see you will create it in software. We have other applications for the WBS. Now, we typically create the WBS during the planning step of the project management process. It means that it also can be useful for other elements and we don't have to stick only to the planning. We can also use the WBS in other parts and other um, steps of the process. We have 
the use of it during project definition or initiation, which is a very interesting way to identify what's happening with the project. Of course, we use it mainly in project planning and when we are creating the project plan. And of course, it will also be part of project execution and reporting. Now let's have a look at those different uses. What are the specific things that we can do with it in those different steps? Let's have a look at project definition. We can consider the WBS as a thought tool. Uh, it gives you an idea how the project looks or will look, what, what you will be working on. It provides a structure, so it already gives you some more information during the initiation step. On the other hand, it's also an architectural tool which shows the architecture and the structure of the project. It's also very interesting here because you can identify different phases that would be very interesting to subdivide the project in. Of course, during planning, it's the main use of the WBS. We use it, uh, let's say, um, uh, up till we reach the work packages and we define the final activities. So basically, this is the main tool for planning. We can also use it for estimating cost and duration. So when we understand what the work packages are, what the activities are about, it becomes very easy to estimate duration and cost and create a project schedule. We can also create a budget. We can, based on the WBS or the information that we found with the WBS or by developing the WBS, we can create what we call the time-faced and cumulative budget, but we will talk about that later. During project execution, the WBS, certainly in tree form, is very interesting to show what activities has, have been done because a level is finished with when all the lower level activities are also finished. The tree format is very useful. It shows us how the project looks like. We can indicate what has been done. It's very visual. Uh, people will sh see very quickly what has been done, what has still have to be done and things like that. Now, the table format on the other side, we obtain valuable information about the project, about the progress, and we can use the data later to determine earned value parameters uh, like plant value, earned value, actual cost. But it also gives us the actual uh, register of the data that we obtain from reporting. So basically, we know when activities started and finished, we know how much time people worked on those activities and so on. When we look at the work packages, well, we look at the work packages, which are defined as the smallest building blocks of the work breakdown structure. And these building blocks are so small enough to allow the project manager to define the necessary steps to complete the work. Now, we can also consider a work package as a sub project, which contains more activities. In order to create something, we may have to have those subsequent steps and we may have to decompose that work package further into a set of activities. Like we said in the PIMBOK, a work package is basically the effort required to produce a deliverable. Uh, we are creating deliverables and the work package is creating that specific deliverable. It's independent of other work packages and it's easy to determine and manage cost and effort. So it's very important to understand what these work packages are about. We have a work package typically that will be assigned to one person or a specific team. For example, the painters of, uh, in the company and so on. Now, let's have a look what happens when we have small projects. Well, in small projects, it is possible that the activities and the work packages are basically the same. So work packages can be quite large when, for example, you are working and painting uh, in, in a company 
uh, you when you working in a small house it may be one activity to paint or to do the floors while in a large building it may be a little bit more complicated but let's have a look at some examples of work packages now we typically look at a team that can operate independently and that can complete a specific type of work it can be electrical work it can be plumbing it can be carpenting work painters uh, people installing um, heating or electricity all these things can be considered as work packages because it's one team now when we look at the speciality of the team we can define sub activities uh, for example when we look at painters we can subdivide painting of the building in different activities people can uh, paint uh, some elements on the floor or the corridors these are in fact sub projects that contain activities and that will have to be managed in order to finish the work package and at the end of the work package we have the deliverable that everything has been painted now the work packages they have deliverables and the activities are the steps to build a deliverable basically when you look at it this is also kind of a mini project we have to paint everything in the house so we have to paint different elements now they can be done in parallel or one of the other one after the other so there are different possibilities to plan it and like i said before in smaller projects the work packages will be the lowest level uh, of decomposition and basically they will be the activities they will be at the same level as, as the activities we all know ikea i suppose so it depends where you're from in the world but ikea is in fact a company where we can watch or we can take an example of a work package and see what's happening here the work package is basically um, creating a chair the deliverable is the chair and the plan when you buy the chair you have step-by-step -step instructions how to create that chair in the right way and these steps are the activities that lead to the creation of the chair and lead to the completion of the work package just I wanted to say before I finish here that I got this drawing of course from ikea they have a lot of examples and there are a lot of other elements that you can consider when you're looking at this of course we can consider the construction of this chair as a mini project and that's what we were saying before the work packages are basically mini projects so that was it for this presentation i hope it was interesting that you understand what the wbs is why it is important what work packages are what activities are and how they are all linked together and when this is finished i can close this video here and i'm looking forward to seeing you in our next video thank you and bye bye